My name is Amar Albegovic. Uh, I'm, uh, my parents are Bosnian, but I grew up in Italy. I'm a junior here uh, at St. John's University. Uh, I'm a forward and I've been here three years now. My dad uh, played basketball and he was a big time player. He played uh, EuroLeague and he was actually pretty good. And um, <coughs> my older brother plays too and uh, currently he plays for the uh, Auxilium Torino in uh, the Serie A, uh, so the first uh, Italian league. And uh, I don't know, like when I was little, I just, I just liked that they introduced me to the sport. So, so I tried it out and uh, uh, actually I wasn't that good at it at the beginning. I wasn't that tall. I wasn't like nothing special, you know? And then uh, just when I was about to like give up, like I said, I decided I'd give it another, a last shot. And a whole summer I worked out like crazy and I actually grew a lot in one summer. So when I came back, it was a whole different story, you know, and I, and I came back and for my small club in Udine, Chibi Udine, I played really well and interest started rising. I played uh, throughout my whole like early childhood. I played uh, in Udine, like where we grew up in Italy. And uh, like I said, I wasn't that good. But then finally, I, like I was able to like by working a lot, a lot, uh, I was I was able to like get better, you know. And uh, when I was when I was 16, when I was yeah, when I was about 16 years old, um, I got this offer from Stella Azzurra in Rome. And uh, when I went over there, I was in trouble at first because it's a whole, it was a whole new level, you know, of difficulty because it's one of the biggest academies in uh, in Italy, you know. So the the um, competition was great, and I think that place really helped me a lot. The, uh, the coach over there, Germano D'Arcangeli, is like a second father for me. He worked out with me so many hours a day, and like he believed in me from the moment I got there. So. I was really blessed, you know, to have this opportunity to go over there. And after that, uh, I got I got called for a, a, my Boston national team. So uh, I mean, I got called for different national teams, but I ch uh, I finally I chose to play for them, you know. And um, I went to play under 20s for them because um, I tried to play under 18s, but they didn't finish my passport in time, so I I wasn't able to to do that. And then. But I played for under 20s for them, and uh, that's when uh, Coach Coach Lav, that was here before at St. John's, he, uh, he started showing some interest, you know, and uh, and then uh, next thing I know is that I'm getting a call that that they want me to visit the school, you know, and uh, so um, literally like a month before season starts, maybe a little more, um, I come visit here. And um, I had like I knew I wanted to go to college, you know, because uh, me and my dad talk about it a lot, and I knew I wanted to come to the states to play. So I, I I was close to other schools, you know, but then when I came over here and I and I visited here with all of my family, we were in New York and Manhattan, and it was amazing. They showed a Madison Square Garden to us and the campus, and I just fell in love right away, and and that's how I got here. Uh, I came here and I really didn't know how American school really worked, you know. Uh, I was more used to like the European side of, of it, so like you just cho choose one type of like course and it was all, you stay in the same class and all that stuff. But like when I got here, it, it was just a whole nother thing. So like uh, the the advisors took care of me for the first semester, you know, and um, that uh, I kind of like went off what I really wanted to do and but now I was finally able to change it back again to finance and that's what I'm studying here and I think being in New York and getting a St. John's degree in finance is going to be really good for me. I think uh, especially for young players I'd say at high school level um, the game is a lot more like individualized here like they work on like who your best player is, they put they put him on a pedestal, you know, and they say like, and they work him him until to make him become a star, you know, and uh, while over there it's a lot more like a team a team like style of play, so uh, there's a lot of really great individuals that come out of like programs like this, and there's incredible talents over here, and I think the biggest difference is just the 
pace the game is played at. Like, so here it's, everything is so much faster just because you have so many great athletes that can like run faster, jump faster, smarter. They like, it's, it's just more in the culture, you know, like uh, basketball is so much more in American culture, I feel like, than in, the, in European culture. So they put, America puts so much more money into, into developing basketball players and developing like facilities like this. It's like, when I got here, I couldn't believe it. And uh, what I think is that there's so much more invested into talents here and into like basketball players here than there is over there. So it's a little harder to stand out over there. It's, it's just more of like, uh, individual like get putting your mind to it if you really want to want it and if you really want to be a basketball player coming out of high school over there like you either go to university or you play pro like there's no other you can't like it's really hard over there to go to a university and play at the same time like my friends are trying to do that and they're all telling me it's nearly impossible you know but here you get the unique opportunity of like studying and playing at the same time and uh, I feel like uh, like the American culture grows up with basketball football baseball and everything is like there a lot of it is focused on that just because it's such a big country and people love sports over here so um, I think they just invest so much money in, get, in, in growing all these players and giving uh, players a chance to 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 be able to like study at the same time and play basketball at the same time so you can get an education because you never know what's going to happen to you tomorrow Yeah, I, like just like you said, it, like you're treated like a pro player. So like the media is um, always like trying to figure out if everything is OK in the team, if like the like a player is uh, feeling some type of way or something like they're always trying to get you in some way, you know, like that you're so much more exposed to the media here because I mean, NCAA basketball is followed more than than NBA basketball just because uh, just because people love young players so much and um, I feel like uh, like we have media after after every game. We have um, we have uh, media days uh, b uh, at the beginning of every season, and uh, at every big tournament, there's a lot of media. So it's like you're under the spotlight, and especially being in New, in New York, it's just it just there's so many different newspapers and like like online sites that just like can't wait for you to like give an interview or something. I wake up about like uh, 7, 7.30 and I come here, we have breakfast. Um, there, like we lift uh, depending on how your class schedule is. So like we have different groups that lift, you know. And uh, so usually I have breakfast, I lift right after and then I go to uh, class. You can either choose, uh, when you register you can choose uh, morning classes or night classes. So some kids have night classes, some kids have morning classes. I usually have uh, morning classes, so at, right after my morning classes, I, I'd be in class from like 9 to, to 12.30 maybe. Right after that I have to come here and uh, we like uh, do treatment or like whatever you need to do for your body, get taped and then practice starts. We practice and then after that, uh, like whenever we're done, we, we, we go have dinner usually like in groups not not really all together but like we usually like hang out uh, at the diner and then you go home rest up because tomorrow is the same thing <laughs> we we got here at two at two o'clock and our game is at 6 30. we come here we uh watch some tape for the third time we watch tape on the, on the opposing team just to like refresh our memories just to make sure everybody's locked in uh, then we go on the court, we run through, like we, uh, not really run through, we just walk through all their plays, you know, the, like we should know all their plays and how to guard this, how to guard that, like our strategy uh, side of the, of the game. We do that, then we have a pre-game meal all together upstairs. After that we have like a, an hour and a half where like your people can get treatment. Uh, it, it's um, it's just uh, to set a pregame routine because now people don't really need it. But like when we're like uh, when we're like 15 games in, there's gonna be a lot of banged up uh, guys, you know. So so we have that, and then after that we we get taped, dressed, and uh, we go out, and we have three groups, uh, and we warm up. Uh, everybody warms up about like 12 minutes, 
of like intense warm up so 12 12 12 that's like uh 36 and um after that uh, we come back in we put uh, like our actual jerseys on and uh we, co we have like a pre-game meeting uh with the final like points and stuff and um and then we go back out and we have five minutes of um of uh, layup lines and then the, the game starts over here um it's it's this is another thing that is totally different from european basketball is uh in europe we play like every weekend so like maybe you can play once or twice a week like really like if exaggerating but here it's like you can you can play three games in six days like just in the middle of the season for no reason you know so it, it's just like so compressed they say it's because uh they don't want um the games to take up too much time of our school time you know so like they don't want like a whole semester to go away but uh, I feel like it's just it puts so much stress on our bodies that that people then actually do get like banged up or injured and stuff like that and um, I think uh, I think uh, the European the European side of this is maybe it's probably a little better because people actually get more rest and get ready be ready for the next game you know I feel like there's nothing else in the world, you know, that is better than that. Like, uh, uh, going over there is just a whole different experience than, than playing here. I mean, here it's a lot more closed and there's like a lot of fans, it's a lot noisier. But over there, you just walk in there and like knowing how much history has gone through that, that gym is, is unreal, you know, it, it just gets you every time. Uh, like I told you, I played uh, in Roma, in Rome and uh, for Stella Zura Roma and I have a lot of uh, friends that actually play pro now and uh, most of them play in Italy. I, uh, I have a friend that plays for Seattle and I have one of my best friends who plays for Marist. Uh, he was my roommate for Stella Zura and now he plays at Marist. He's a, he's a sophomore and he, he's doing pretty well too and I mean uh, with present teammates uh, I was happy to have uh, Federico here because he speaks my same language so it's it's nice to have him here. I, we live together now uh, in, in an apartment. Uh, I live with him, uh, Kasum, Sima, and uh, it's it's like an all international house, you know. And we have a lot of international talent here, and mixed with with these this Amer these American players, it's it, it comes out really nice. Uh, Asu Talents have a real like community thing going on here because uh, we have three players that play soccer that are from Italy. Uh, all three of them are from around Milan, and uh, we have three uh, volleyball players that are from Italy. So like, we are all really close, and we like hang out all, like whenever we can. So I go to every volleyball game I can, and I go to every soccer game I can. And their season just finished. They they didn't do as well as they thought, but. But I think they're they're all really amazing, and the, that, that is, I'm really happy to have them here. We don't really have that much time, like like throughout all, uh, throughout the season. But but in the summer, I definitely enjoy going over there. It's it's amazing, really. And like when we have workouts and stuff, and we ha when we have that day off, that's where I go because it's it's just I don't know when I'm gonna have this opportunity again, you know. Uh, I'd say Central Park is one of my favorite places. I, yeah, I'd say that that's probably my favorite place to, to go see. It's just it just to get out of all out of all that noise and so so quick is just like amazing to me. I couldn't believe it. Chris Dunn, Chris Dunn that now plays for, in the NBA. He was amazing. Like I feel like he's probably one of the most talented guys I've played for, and. Uh, uh, one of the most talented guys I've played with is uh, D'Angelo Harrison. My first year here. Now he plays in Turkey, and I and I, he's top. He's like top five uh, NCAA scorers in the last uh, ten years or something. Like he's amazing. Like, like uh, I, I just I, I just looked up to him coming here as a freshman, you know, and he was a senior, and I felt like he he was just a really really talented player. We don't have football here, so like uh, basketball is a little like viewed as our only like biggest sport. Like, uh, 
So and baseball too, we're pretty good uh, in baseball too. So, but I feel like basketball is viewed as like uh, the spirit of the school, you know, just because. Um, we, as I said, we don't have football, and football is like American sport. Like, and um, since since they they cut football off, I feel like that that's really been the heart of this school. But it's not like you have a privilege, you know. Like some people might look up to you, but you have to still be like. All, I don't, I feel like all of us and all of my teammates here are like really like like normal people you know like they 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 don't feel like privileged or anything like we all know that we've worked for everything we have here so i mean i feel like i feel like we earned this you know? it's crazy just to think that we have not one but two hall of famers in our staff and uh, um i think that having him here has just brought so much like more energy to all the people that come to like watch us you know there's there it's just a whole different feeling it's like every game we play everyone's so excited that that we have like the present and since he went to this school that's the most the amazing part and i mean having him and mitch here is just like a blessing for us like uh, when like he gives us his insights um, he has just tremendous experience and like he knows so much that when he tells you something like you know that that is the best thing to do you know and I feel like, I feel like uh, Mitch is like helping us on the defensive end, and like we're doing really good. And uh, coach just on offense, he just like shows you so many different uh, ways to play. You know, like so he, like he literally like is a is a student of the game, and he's trying to like pass on this culture to us. And and uh, I feel like uh, it's just a benefit and a blessing for all of us and on the team. You can still watch him over there and he shoot a uh, hundred, a hundred times, and uh, he barely ever misses. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, after college in general, I feel like I, I want to play basketball. That's like that's why I came here. You know, that's why I, when I was 16, I moved away from my family, knowing that. I wanted to do this, you know, like I wanted this to be the way I make, I make and earn money. Uh, but I also know that that I won't be able to do this forever, you know. Like <laughs> there's a lot of players that think they can play forever, but it's just not how it works. Like when it, when you get old, you get old. Like your body, your body has a limit, you know. And I think that's why that's one of the most important reasons and like why I chose college, you know, so I could actually get an education and I feel like if something ever happens, let's hope not, like I'm ready to, to go into the real life, you know, and like even though it's not what I want to do, but I have to, I have to have a second exit, you know.